Yeah, anything that uh, uh, you would like to discuss about meditation? So I have one question for you while you're doing the research. So did you find any that uh, normally you are not expected, you know, somehow the Buddha taught at the beginning, like everything, and then how the, the essence is there, but of course, and you did particular research after Buddha passed away within the two, two the two hundred years, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's this, uh, this, uh, there's a lot of things I found that uh, changed, and one of the most important uh, from the viewpoint of what we are discussing now is this changing understanding of mindfulness of breathing, which made me mm -hmm. so happy when I heard you talk about mindfulness of breathing because. When we look at the earliest level, it is exactly what you what you describe: mindfulness, you know, concentration, and the breath is just a support in the background for us mm. to be aware of what's happening. And in the actual mm. instruction, it has sixteen steps that the Buddha leads us through to to work mm. in this way. And I have been able to show about textual developments how they reduce the sixteen to four to two to one, and then it's just mm. focusing on the breath. Ah. Uh -huh. And so, yeah. Sometimes it's, it's like the focus becomes just the one, the first one, and then not emphasize the other sixteen part, right? The exactly. rest part. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and, and yep. this is the way I was taught mindfulness of breathing when I was a young monk. And the problem was that I am I'm an anger type. I very easily got angry. It's much better right. now. But <laughs> the more I was meditating, the more I was getting angry. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. I was like, what's happening? It's, it's the opposite yeah. of what should be happening. But now I understand because I was focusing always on the breath sensation here, I right, was right. teaching my mind to get into this tunnel vision. Right, right, right. And this is what happens when I get angry. I get this person and then I get this tunnel vision. Go, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> right. Yeah, so in Mahamudra tradition, what we call the breath is just uh, reference points as you beautifully described. And at the same time, what we call the Four Noble Truth. So we need to remember how the Four Noble Truth also practice while being with the breath. So accepting the, the reality as it is. So this is a really important, like the deep breath, shallow breath, tight breath, relaxed breath, up in irregular breath, doesn't matter, just natural breath. So that is the what we call the beginning of development of wisdom. So wisdom meaning knowing the uh, reality as it is. So if we can be the breath as it is, it's developed wisdom. And at the same time, we are not trying to block other thought. So thought, emotion, sound, blah, 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 yada, yada, and normally I make a lot of jokes. That if the pizza comes, welcome pizza. And welcome pizza come, welcome pizza go. But the important is, as long as if you still remember the breath, it's okay. The point of the concentration, point of the samadhi or of mindfulness is being with the breath. So if you remember the glimpse of the breath, whatever, blah, 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 yada, yada, it's okay. But the, as soon as if you say, cannot think pizza, no any other thought, only breath, then what happened? We think about pizza. <laughs> And uh, not only one pizza, three pizza, four pizza, ten pizzas, you know. So then, so accepting the other thought, mistakes, bala bala bala, yada yada yada, is what we call the beginning of letting go of aversion. And then being as, as it is, good, bad, doesn't matter, is the beginning of letting go of craving or desire. So just with the breath, we develop wisdom. And then that wisdom is the beginning of letting go of ignorance. And at the same time, we are letting go of aversion and craving. So knowing breath as it is, is the beginning of knowing the suffering and letting go of these uh, three poison, aversion, craving, and ignorance, is the abandoning the the cause of the suffering. And as we let go of cause of suffering, then the cessation follows. 
and the continue practice, continue to be with awareness, continue to be with awareness, the path. So these are really important that we are normally emphasize. It's so beautiful, Rinpoche. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> and this is this is exactly also the end of Sutta. That is that is the original idea. Mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, there's there's a part of these sixteen steps. It's in the in the second tetrad, four types of four. So it starts off with joy and happiness, because it gives that that the development of the natural joy, of being in the here and now, keeps the mind right. joyous, and then experiencing what's happening in the mind. Right. And just letting it happen. Let the let the pizzas come and go, as you say, but as you keep letting the pizzas come and go. As the pizzas no longer impact on my mind, the mind naturally becomes quiet. Mm. And I think this is important to emphasize because sometimes we get the criticism, well, you just let the mind run around and you're just daydreaming. That's not the point. The point is, as you so beautifully demonstrated with the Four Noble Truth, if we are with the breath and aware of the thinking, then at that point, we don't need to stop the thinking. We can just sit back and let it move by. And as long as we don't identify with it, we are not caught up in it, it can't do any harm. And when the mind, this is what the mind always does. Now, why does the mind talk so much? Because it always wants to be from, I'm here, I'm in charge, this is mine. So if I say, no, not yours, no, not mine, the mind goes like, blah, 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 and the mind becomes naturally quiet, yeah. naturally calm, settling in itself. And this is precisely where then we can experience the mind as such. This is the next step in, in, the, in the Anapanasati Sutta, in the, in the discourse. Mm -hmm. The mental formations are being experienced. They naturally come. And then you experience mind as such. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs>